Hey y'all, how y'all doing? I hope everybody's doing well on today and blessed in Jesus' name. Just coming with a quick video of encouragement to stay in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, to stay in the faith of his, of his word, of his promise to his children, because we are reminded constantly in the scripture that he will provide for us. Who will provide? Jesus will provide for his children. That's his ultimate promise to us, that we will have peace. Amen. He didn't say that we will not have struggles, that we will not have temptations that we will not, um, you know, just have difficulty in life. He never promised that we wouldn't have these things happen to us. He said to think it not strange that these things happen to you. Amen. To, to not think that it's strange, but to rejoice in the Lord and to know that he is with you and that whatever you may be struggling with, that you're tempted with, that the Lord will help see you through it. Amen. We just have to look and to his word, study his word daily, uh, pray fast and stay in God's um, word. That's the main thing. Amen. To stay in his word because the devil, what he wants us to do when we are struggling, when we are going through uh, adverse, um, difficult times, when we're going through things that we're unsure of, you know, or health failing, anything, the devil wants you to stop reading God's word. Why? Because the truth is in God's word. So I'll say it again. The devil wants you to stop reading God's word when you're faced with difficulties. So don't give up the good fight of faith. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. Amen. Submit yourself to the Lord always when you're in the middle of a temptation at the beginning. Don't yield to it. Submit to Jesus. Amen. The devil will, the devil will flee from you. You have to submit yourself to Jesus. Amen. So it's not to say we won't have struggles or anything. That stuff will come. You know, we when we were so used to living in sin, when we were living in the flesh for so long, you know, there's going to be a fight. Once you decide you want to follow Jesus, you get baptized in Jesus' name, um, you get baptized in the Spirit as well, and you want to live for Jesus. This walk is not easy. So, you know, when people talk a certain way, it's not easy. Amen. So, that's why a lot of people get discouraged because they're hearing messages like, oh, yeah, this is just a walk in the park. No, living in sin is a walk in the park. Why is living in sin a walk in the park? Because it's easy to do. There's no resistance. There's no type of challenge. Um, you yield to it. You yield to sin. So when we're used to yielding to the sins that we lived in and these things may try to resurface in our lives. Um, and sometimes we could actually welcome them in with things, certain things that we watch, things that we listen to. So we have to be very careful of our ear gates, our eye gates. They're very sensitive. Amen. So I learned that too. And I shared that in the video before, like I can't listen to certain things no more. I cannot. It's trash. Like I listen, I think about that stuff now, like, man, I just put a whole bunch of trash in my ears and to my conscience and to my whole being. And it just disturbs your peace. Amen. It's, it's not of God. So why would you want to listen to things that's going to make you angry, that's going to make you sad, that's not going to give you uh, the joy of the Lord? And you, know, you know, your mind is taken off of Jesus when you listen to gangster rap, when you listen to sensual music. Amen. When you listen to uh, things that glorify yourself, you know, that too. You know, we could think so highly of ourselves, be all high-minded and that we forget that we have a maker, you know, Jesus Christ. And so, you know, we have to be very careful of the things that we listen to, um, movies that we watch and entertainment, all that stuff that pulls us away from the Lord. So, you know, be mindful of those things. If you're dealing with some type of struggles and temptations that it could simply be the things you're listening to. We have to cleanse ourselves from that. We have to ask the Lord, you know, we have to be serious about our walk with him. Lord, is there something in my life that's not pleasing unto you, please remove it, Lord. And it's going to be very uncomfortable. Hey, Amen. It's going to be very uncomfortable because, you know, you used to live in a certain way, watching certain things, listening to certain things, hanging out with certain people. And the Lord, he will remove it. He will remove it because he's a jealous God and he wants you to get close to him. Hey, Amen. He wants you to get close to him in spirit and in truth, not just by uh, doing certain things like going to church and things, that's wonderful. But at the same time, if your life 
it's, it's, you know, if you're not living your life according to the Lord's law, statute, and commandments, then, hey, what are, you, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? So we have to be mindful that and he tells us, Jesus teaches us in his word to, to be careful to remember his commandments, to be careful to not forget the, his commandments. Amen. And so we have to be careful on our walk. Why be careful? Because the snares of the enemy is right there. Amen. The snares of the enemy is right there waiting for you to trip up, waiting for you to fall, waiting for you to fall back into sin. So we have to submit ourselves to God to read his to read his word. That's how we submit ourselves to him. Reading his word daily. That is food for a believer. So a lot of people say they believe in God. I believe in God. I believe. I believe. But you're not reading his word and you're not applying it to your life. So, you know, that's double mindedness in God's sight. See, he don't think like we do. We could think we're doing things right, but what God says in his word is total opposite. And that's why a lot of people don't want to read his word to keep it real, because it goes against what we want to do. It goes against the carnal mind living in sin. So when we begin to read God's word, it purifies us. It purifies. I'll say it again. When we begin to read God's word, it purifies your heart. It cleanses your mind of the filth of all the things that you thought were right. And God is telling you it's wrong. People don't want to be wrong. They don't want to be told that you're wrong. But you got the only way you can get right is learning your wrongs through God's word and his teachings. Amen. And so, you know, we just have to stay in God's word and his faith and, and believe on him. So if we're going to believe on him, we have to believe that his word is true. Whether we want to agree with it or not, you have to believe that his word is true. Amen. Because he changes not. And a lot of people, you know, just because there's different laws and um, things changing in the world with politicians changing up everything, people think it, that's a, a ticket, a license to sin. But God's word, he does not give any man license to sin. He does not. And, and that's how a lot of people get fooled and tripped up. Right there, because they say, oh, my state passed this law and we get to do this and that. What's more important? The laws of the land are God's commandments. Because you, you notice that the laws of the land, they change often. They don't stay the same. And you will notice that God's word stays the same. Amen. He changes not. And that's how you know his word is sure. And that, you you know, believing in his word is the best decision that you can ever make in your life. You know, following after man's laws, they keep changing up. And um, this world don't, this world done forgot about God. And I see that. They done forgot about God. Everybody trying to put themselves on the pedestal. These politicians and everybody, government and all these uh, top of the hill folks. And, and they don't, they going to learn. They're going to learn, man, if they don't repent. So it don't matter who they are. Um, they have to give an account for all these things. And so, you know, God is not planning this hour. And, you know, praying for you guys, praying. We got to pray for one another and pray for people that's living in sin and not knowing um, the repercussions, the ramifications of living in sin. There are severe ramifications for living in sin, uh, young and old. Um, you know, old enough to understand that you are, in fact, violating the word of God, that you're violating God's law, statutes, and commandments. It's, these are serious things. And a lot of people don't understand because they don't believe in God. And that's going to be a lot of people's downfall. The Bible says that the heathen digs his own pit and lie in it. So, you know, that's a scary and sad thing to, to uh, take in because it's true. And it's so sad and unfortunate that a lot of people, uh, they rather follow behind their friends or follow behind authors that, that create these self-help books. And they tell them, they lying to them and telling them that you in charge. <laughs> you know, they tell people that in these self-help books and a lot of people fall for you in charge. You know, do what you do, do what makes you happy. And, you know, and just as long as you smiling, as long as you you know, what is right in, in people's own eyes? What's right is living in sin. That's what they think is right. Doing what makes you happy. That's what living in sin is. 
doing what makes you happy instead of doing the will of the, of the Lord. So there's a total difference. But again, that's going to be a lot of people's downfall right there is um, their disbelief. Their disbelief in what? Their disbelief in Jesus. Their disbelief in his teachings and his word, his law, statute, and commandments. Their disbelief in the afterlife of heaven and hell. People don't believe in that. They don't because I know I didn't when I was um, doing new age and, and yoga and all that stuff, making myself lighter clearing out my mind and I was just as crazy as I want to be <laughs> so you know that's nothing good about clearing out your mind you are supposed to have thoughts the Lord created you to have a mind a thinking mind a functionable mind not a relaxed mind and oh I have nothing to think about that's of the devil so you got to come up if anybody's practicing witchcraft you need to come up out of that in Jesus name you need to know that it's a violation of of, of God's law statute and commandment you you self indulging in that stuff, and people don't understand. That's what's really popular right now, and they thinking they really doing something by doing yoga, um, self help meditation. This nation done forgot about God, and that is a big error. That is a big error because again, that's going to be a lot of people's downfall, digging their own pit and falling in it. It's so sad. It's like a domino effect. Because a lot of people believe um, that, you know, the universe is, is looking out for their best interest in life. Jesus created all this. There is no universe without him. Amen. I'll say it again. There is no universe without Jesus. So, you know, tap into your maker. Learn about your maker. Read his word. Forget what other people around you are saying. Because I'm telling you now. I tried all that stuff. I did it. I tried it. Burning the incense. Uh, sitting down in the yard, walking in dirt, gazing at the sun, reading horoscopes, indulging in tarot cards. I'm telling you now, that stuff will lead you to hell. Straight up. I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm not going to play games with you. Practicing that stuff will send you to hell. Yoga too. You need to look up. How this stuff started, the history of it. Don't just say, oh, it's, it started uh, because, you know, so people could find their higher self. I'm telling you now, if you don't reach the most high God, if you don't learn about the most high God and submit yourself to him, you have learned nothing. You are in danger. I'm telling you now, you are in danger of eternal separation from your maker. And, and again, it is void. There is a heaven. There is a hell. And unfortunately, a lot of people are going to learn the hard way. Hopefully, you learn in this life. Amen. Because once you cross over, once your time is up here on this earth, completely over, that, that's it. You, you creating your own fate right now while you have breath in your body. I'll say it again. You are creating your own fate right now while you have breath in your body. And that's people's downfall. Disbelief. Right there. You can sum up a lot of people's, uh, what their downfall would be. Disbelief. I don't believe that. You know, the Bible's old. I, I don't believe that. There's no Jesus. I can't see him. They come up with all these different things. Same way I used to talk. I was crafty because I was, you know, the devil was speaking through me. I was very crafty with my words. I thought I was high-minded. I was untouchable. I was in charge. Once my breath got snatched out of my body, I had the wake-up call of a lifetime. There is a hell. There is a hell. And I was so desperate to learn about Jesus because that's who I called upon when I was in outer darkness. That's where he sends the unprofitable servants, you can read that in his word, to outer darkness where they'll be weeping and gnashing the teeth. That's people's disbelief. That's people's downfall. Only thing we can do is pray for people. Uh, we're not to argue and get back and forth with them. Simply warn them of, of the severity and ramifications of sin, of disbelief in Jesus. 
that we're living in some critical times. Again, this world has forgotten about God. They're trying to completely take him out, trying to take out the commandments, trying to take away everything of what God established for humans on this earth, on his land. This is his land. Whew. So, you know, God's wrath is no joke. Death is no joke. And when I say everybody, people say, oh, everybody going to die. Yes, but I'm talking about death. That's a place for people who are going uh, to eternal damnation, to hell. That's what death is for you. But for believers that's living for Jesus, that's been following after him, um, who's been loving him and trusting him and believing in him, a lot of us had hard lessons. That's what, that's what has brought us to Christ. A lot of us had hard lessons. We have uh, experienced the wrath of God. That it, There is no other punishment that could amount to God's wrath. Amen. There is no punishment on earth. You can go to jail, anything. It's, it, it does not amount to God's wrath. His wake-up call. His wake-up calls is just that serious. You will not be the same after an encounter like that. Amen. So that's all I want to talk about on today is just encouraging somebody out there to stay in the faith of Jesus, to not give up the good fight of faith, um, to not think that it's strange if you go through different uh, struggles and temptations, health issues in life, to know that if you're living for the Lord Jesus Christ, you pray, you wait upon the Lord. And he will answer his children. Amen. And I'm a living testimony on that on today. And um, my last video I shared with y'all that I had a concussion. I'm still healing right now. Uh, no workout. And um, so it's all good. Because I said, hey, God gave me this body. I have to take care of it. And I tried to work out last week. I had a concussion um, on the 27th of April. And so I was still trying to work. I was like, I feel okay. I feel, you know, the doctor told me to rest. Hey, it costs to disobey. So, um, and it's more severe when you disobey the word of God. But my doctor said, rest. You know, hey, Samila, you need to rest. You know, sit it out. I was like, okay, okay. You know, and I, I thought to myself, I feel okay. Got up, went on to the gym, kept going. Last week, last Wednesday, that was it. I was in my locker room not feeling well. So, um, when it's time to rest, it's time to rest. Amen. I thank the Lord for healing on today. I'm feeling much better. Clarity wise, feeling wonderful. I had a CAT scan last on this past Friday and got the results back and they found nothing on my brain additional from a mal concussion. So there's no scarring, no tissue, no, no concerns in my brain. I thank the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm feeling much better. Just in therapy right now. And, um, doing a lot of, uh, what, what do you call it? Like balance and symmetry movement, like occupational therapy, people recovering with uh, mild concussion. So yeah, I just thank the Lord. My speech is back to, it was all jammed up last week. And uh, so I kept pushing myself to do stuff and I didn't rest, but rest definitely uh, was the answer. <laughs> and, you know, prayer, the Lord, you know, I'm only here by God's permission, so I'm just thankful to be here on today and to have a testimony of uh, the Lord just being present in my life and changing my life and helping me and just helping me along the way, y'all. I'm just so blessed and thankful, and you are too. Just, you know, just stay in God's word. That we could, That's all we could do is stay in his word, uh, to stay in fasting and prayer, to pray for one another. And to um, just be thankful and grateful, y'all. You know, we are all here by God's permission. Whether you believe that or not, it's the truth. So, you know, give God the praise. Give him the praise and the honor and glory that just do unto his name. All right, y'all. That's all I want to talk about today. I'm going longer than what I thought. Hope you guys have a blessed rest of the evening and day. Take care.